Armando Hasso dengan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasso dengan. Please like, and you can also here ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks, please. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now in this video, we're looking at chemical bonds and the different types. Um, so there are two main types of chemical bonds. We have what's called intramolecular bonds and intermolecular bonds. Now intramolecular bonds is essentially bonds between atoms inside a molecule. Whereas intermolecular bonds is bonds between molecules. So what do I mean by this? Well, for example of intramolecular bonds, if we have a H2O um, molecule, molecule here, these would be the intramolecular bonds because it's between atoms, the hydrogen and the oxygen, inside the molecule. And if we look at intermolecular bonds, this is where we have, for example, many water, many H2Os. And all of them have some form of attraction um, between them. And this is an example of intermolecular bonds, bonds between the molecules, between H2O. Now, let's firstly concentrate on intramolecular bonds. Intramolecular bonds, there are three main types. We have ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. Now, ionic bonds is essentially bonds between opposite charges. For example, if we have sodium, Na, and we draw its electron shells, etc., sodium has one valence electron. And then we have chloride. Chloride has seven valence electrons. Now, essentially, chloride needs one more electron to become stable, following the octet rule. And then sodium just has to lose one electron to make it even more stable. So what happens is that sodium's valence electron will move into chlorides. And what this will do is that it will make sodium stable and make chloride stable after the complete uh, transfer of the electron. And then this will actually cause sodium to become more positive because it lost an electron and chloride to become negatively charged because it gained an electron, it gained a negative electron. And so this causes attraction between the positive and negative ends, between the sodium atom and chloride atom. Next, we have covalent bondings, which, uh, which can be described as electrons being shared between two atoms. So an example of this, if we have hydrogen, which has one valence electron, and we have oxygen, which has six valence electrons. Hydrogen needs one more electron to become stable. Oxygen has six valence electrons, um, and it needs essentially two more electrons to become stable, but with one extra electron, it will become even more stable. So what happens is that hydrogen's electron can be shared between oxygens. And also oxygen's electron can be shared between hydrogens. So there is um, good bond, bonds here. It's not, how, it's not as strong as ionic bonds, however. Uh, next we have metallic bonds. And metallic bonds only involves metals, obviously. What happens here is that we have fixed cations, positive, positively charged atoms floating in a sea of electrons. The positive of metals and the negative of electrons keep the metals bonded together. And so essentially, it's like sharing a lot of electrons. But you might think to yourself, wouldn't a cation and a cation repel each other? Um, yes, it would. However, because uh, the electrons are being shared, turning the, turning the metals into cations, this will create a form of stability and attraction between the whole, um, the whole metal unit. The difference between metallic bonding and ionic bonding is that metallic bonding, the electrons are not localized but are delocalized and they essentially move around between atoms, between these cations. An example of this, if we have sodium, which has one valence electron, if you can remember, the sodium's valence electron is negatively charged and when it moves around, it will, it will cause the sodium to become partially uh, positive. And so these cations, these sodiums, are moving, are in a sea of electrons. And so electrons are moving uh, in the area, essentially what's happening, and this causes the, the cation, the sodiums, the positive charged atoms, to be still attached together, so to become relatively stable. And it's because of this uh, sort of metallic bonding 
and the movement of electrons around this area uh, that causes the chemical properties of metals, um, which are being highly, highly thermal and have good electrical conductivity because of the electrons, and also metals being malleable and ductile. And it should be noted that metallic bonds are not as strong as ionic bonds. And so from these three intramolecular bonds, we now know that ionic bonds is the strongest between the three. Next, let's look at intramolecular bonds, the bonds between the molecules. And so there are three types, main types again. We have the dipole to dipole forces. We have the di di dispersive forces or the dispersion forces, also known as dipole induced dipole forces. And then we have the hydrogen bonds. And they're all relatively similar in a way. So let's begin with dipole to dipole forces. And this is where you have attraction between partial charges of polar molecules. So what do I what do we mean by this? Well to look to understand this, let's look at some um, highly electronegative elements such as fluoride number nine, oxygen number eight, and chlor chloride number seventeen. And these are all el very electronegative. They want to be they want to get electrons. They want electrons they, to and to make them a bit more uh, negatively charged. Now let's have a look at an example of a dipole molecule. Here's a dipole molecule consisting of one oxygen, three carbons, and some hydrogens. Now, as I mentioned, the oxygen is electro, very highly electronegative. And even though it, it will form a covalent bond with a carbon, it, because it is more electronegative, it will essentially hog most of the electrons. So therefore, creating a partial charge where the oxygen this end is partially negative and therefore the opposite end is partially positive. And so if we look at another example such as hydrogen chloride, here we have two hydrogen chlorides. The chloride will have a partial negative charge and the hydrogen will have partial positive charge. And so this positive and negative charges, these partial positive and negative charges will have attraction. So there's attractive forces between these polar molecules. The other type of intermolecular force is the dispersive forces, also known as a di uh, dipole-induced dipole forces, or the London forces. And these involve dipoles of polarizable molecules. What this essentially means is that electrons will, um, at any one moment, it will be on more on one side of the molecule than the other side, creating a charge. So for example, if we have oxygen gas, which is essentially two oxygens bounded together, um, at any one moment, let's just say, some electrons might, might be found in, in, um, in one side of this molecule. And so this will create a charge, and so this will become a polarizable molecule. And this is usually only temporary. So electrons only temporarily group up on one side of the molecule. And again, because of this, this is what creates the different charges on either side of the molecule. And these different charges will then attract opposite charges, uh, forming um, a, a, a sort of temporarily uh, weak to strong bond uh, between different molecules. And the other, the last type of the intermolecular force is a hydrogen bonds, and this is very much similar to the dipole to dipole bonds. And essentially, is where hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluoride uh, is is sort of bounded to another nitrogen, oxygen, or fluoride of another atom. And so we can say that the hydrogen bonding is a special case of a dipole forces. So a good example of this is water. If we have, for example, three water molecules here, and water consists of two hydrogens and one oxygen, the oxygen being represented as red here, and the hydrogens being represented as blue. And so as we've learned, the oxygen is actually more electronegative and so has a partial negative charge, and whereas the hydrogen has a partial positive charges. And so as you can see, the partial positive charge of the hydrogen and the partial negative charge of an oxygen will actually have some, of, some form of attractive force. And this, is, and this attractive force is known as hydrogen bonds. The intramolecular forces are not as strong as the intramolecular forces. The strongest intramolecular force is the ionic bonds, whereas the strongest intermolecular force is the van der Waals forces, also known as the London forces. 
the London Dispersive Forces. Thanks for watching. Please like.